is up everyone after months and months of planning traveling we finally got lauren tickner here and you can follow her on instagram at lauren tickner she has essentially figured out ways on social media to help people scale their business without being spammy and not making people feel weird about dming people on social media and she started out in the fitness industry and then a couple of friends asked her for help and then it seems like you had the aha moment of like, oh, shit, I'm on to something cool here. Let's see what happens. Fast forward and Lauren's crushing it, making lots of money, helping lots of people. Happy to have Lauren on and let's get right to it. So, Lauren, you've been doing social media for like 10 years now. How, how has the game changed since Instagram went from just like posting pretty pictures and let me put this filter on so I look tan to what it's evolved to nowadays? Uh, back in the early days, it was so cool because you could make a really hypey post in the morning, like, hey, because I was in fitness, right? So I'd pay, take a photo of these brownies or something, these healthy macro-friendly brownies with like zero sugar, high protein. And I'd post it in the morning and like, it was so aesthetic. And I would say, comment if you want the recipe. So I'd kind of get people on their edge of their seats. And then in the evening, I would then make a post with the recipe and everyone would see it because how the algorithm worked, it was based upon, you know, recency back then. And because they'd seen my posts in the past, pretty, pretty often back then people would still have their notifications on. So they would get notified. So it was crazy. I was just, one of my friends was stalking me and just, we were having some banter about it because she had followed me for seven years. And now she's like one of my closest friends. And she was saying like, Lauren, you know, I used to make every single one of those recipes. And she's like, I'm going to go back on your profile. And it was mad. Like these posts literally have thousands of comments on them, people wanting the recipe. And it was back before viral videos was even a concept. You could just build such an engaged audience purely through consistency and grind like it was a lot of work because I'd replied to every single comment manually there was no automated dms nothing so yeah those 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 were like the glory days you know of like people when they think about the first days of the startup where they were like sleeping on the couch and they were you know going and knocking on doors and it's like feels so euphoric to look back but I can't lie it was a grind like it's a lot easier now and I'm grateful for that because it means that people can grow their businesses through just their phone and laptop right which is really really cool and so uh back then yeah it was fun it was tough and now I mean now you've got to be really strategic with your strategy because well, that makes sense right <laughs> but uh but because so many people are doing it not many people were doing it back then because it was kind of cringy to build a personal brand whereas now it's like it's a thing to do so that would be probably the biggest difference is back then you could kind of just freestyle and gain a bunch of followers whereas now you really have to be careful about what you're posting yeah i remember i was traveling to spain and i like went on this trip by myself and i came back and a friend of mine was like Hey man, did you did you ever go to Spain? I was like, yeah, it was great. I had so much fun. I did this, I did that. I met some cool people. He goes, oh, you didn't like post about it, so I didn't know if you went or not. And I was like, what? Like I was just attempting to be present, be in the moment, and like not post to social media, just like enjoy my surroundings because I don't know when I'll end up back there. And it's crazy to me how social media can keep people connected, and they want to know what you're doing, but at the same time, like you said, there's so much noise now. How do how does someone who actually like genuinely wants to help people stand out in the crowd is the tough part? Yeah, it's tough until you know the solution, which really is building an authority brand. So a lot of people have tried, you know, boosting posts or making reels or going on TikTok or posting on all these different platforms. And the number one reason why if you're not getting as much reach leads or clients as you want from social media, the reason why it's not working is because people don't see you as an authority. So how can someone say pretty much anything and it's heard like, you know, through a, a megaphone or whatever, but, and maybe they're not the best in the world, but why, why is it that they say something and it lands so clearly versus you, who is like an actual, like legitimate authority in your space, you make a post and no one listens. It's just an authority brand. And it's not about how much authority like you, actually have it's how much perceived authority you have so the perception of the people is like absolutely fundamentally key now obviously if you don't know what you're talking about getting perceived authority is very very challenging however if someone's doing something for a long enough time and if they're a charismatic person like they can manufacture that authority which is a bit of a challenge on social media so that's why personally i like to look for not necessarily someone who's just a creator but someone who's also a practitioner in the trenches like doing that thing to see who should i actually listen to but that takes doing some background checks and at first glance it actually can't be 
clear sometimes. So then the question becomes, okay, if we know that we need to build an authority brand and like, you know, I don't just pull that out of thin air, by the way, like we have worked with more than 1000 clients to help them generate more clients through social media. And time and time again, it's those who can clearly position themselves in authority. Those are the ones that win. So then how do we do that? Well, we need to reverse engineer that. There are a few different ways. One, simple. What's your track record? And can you showcase that track record? Because if you have the track record, but you never talk about it, then no one's going to know. That's the first thing. Second thing is, it's really interesting how it works, but it's about if you know what your ideal client, ideal follower most wants and most aspires to, then how can you showcase that, right? So for some people, like, who would you say the majority of your listeners are? Like, what businesses do they run or what are they doing? They're typically people who are working at a W-2 job as an employee that want to leave leave that or they're people that are already in business that listen to uh, all the sorts of folks that we have on here. Okay, cool. So then it comes down to, well, what do they want, right? So from what you said just there, most likely they're tied to a job that doesn't give them the freedom that they want. You just kind of did a, I call it like a sideways authority drop, right? Which is like, you were in Spain, you were traveling, you were being present, right? That's really idealistic to a lot of people because they don't have the freedom to do that. So then the fact that you were doing that the way that you talk about it, that actually that builds your authority. Like that's a small little building block to authority because you're kind of just like subtly mentioning these things that then subconsciously get into people's mind that then makes them see, ah, you have something that I want, so I'll follow you. Because what is a, what is following? Following is going along a journey with somebody. So if you can bring people along a journey with you, you have to, in the beginning though, get them to see that you're someone worth following, right? That they want to be led by. So then it is a case of, essentially dissecting what do they most want and so if they want freedom if they want to be able to travel whenever they want if they want to have like a happy relationship traveling the world whatever that is well then showcasing that whereas other people let's just say the audience were you know b2b SaaS founders who are just hustling all the time and like they just want to have a big fat exit then it would be talking about let's just say you'd sold a business for 20 million dollars or whatever then obviously you'd be talking more along those lines rather than showcasing the lifestyle so you have to know who it is that you want to be seen as an authority by before you actually go ahead and work on building yourself as an authority but figuring that out and then leading i i believe in segmenting your content into three different types of content one is to reach more people one is to actually get leads and then one is to actually get clients and then when you know in the reach more people content you need to be seen as an authority then you shouldn't be like talking at people right you have to ask yourself if i was to walk on a stage and they were in introducing me to the room how would they introduce me to actually get people to listen to me then you could start your content with all of that stuff and then people immediately listen to you and then therefore it becomes easier for you to grow grow a following rather than just kind of like talking at people all the time yeah you have to give and you have to show people who you are and i was watching i was watching vanderpump rules with my wife the other day i don't know if you watched that show and i was like watching i was like why do people love this show this much because it's such a journey You've seen these people evolve from being in their 20s to now being closer to the 40 or in their 40s and seeing how they've adapted and grown or evolved. Some of them have been evolved, but people people want that authenticity. And that's why I feel like people love reality shows, because it's not typically like acting. It's like real. These are people's real lives and people feel a connection to that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like, you don't have to like flex that you have a bunch of money on social media. You can flex in certain ways, such as like, hey here's my office for the day and you're at a cafe by yourself drinking an espresso or maybe yeah. it's a picnic with your family or something simple. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. And I feel like that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They're like, hey, I have to do this or do that to get any attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 100%. You you nailed it because here's the thing. People can spot that from a mile away that it's fake. That's the thing on social media because you can't, if you're always posting with all these filters and stuff, like at the end of the day, if people are really trying to actually follow you along your journey, they want to see the highs and the lows. And I, I, I do also believe in the fact that being successful with building an authority brand does also come down to ensuring that if you're going through a problem, not talking about it in the moment, but talking about it once you've learned the lesson, because then it's valuable. Otherwise, you're just complaining. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. No one wants to hear about poor little old me and how this happened. And I can't believe this happened to me. Oh my gosh, the world is ending. Like no one, some people will comment and say, I'm so sorry, but that's not going to get you from where you are to want to go when it comes to growing a brand, which you've been doing this for like 10 years now. So who was, who was your first client? 
And how did that come about? Good question. Um, so I was, well, it depends which business we're talking, which business shall I talk about the first Very beginning. One? Very um, beginning, like after you did the fitness, like and you started getting into the social media realm of helping people scale through social. Uh, okay, so basically, what happened was I wrote this ebook on how to write a successful ebook because basically I had made so much money from e- ebooks. This is this is really a long time ago, you know. This is you know like eight or nine years ago. So back then, ebooks you could kill it with ebooks, right? Obviously now. That is definitely not the move. That's really just something that you would launch in order to liquidate ad spend and have some order bumps and some upsells, you know, to liquidate the the cost of acquiring a customer. But anyways, <clears throat> so I made this ebook, and this one girl somehow I was friends with her on Facebook. I don't know how. I wasn't even using Facebook. That's the reason I posted it to Facebook because I knew that I didn't have a following there. So I posted it there because I didn't want to like damage my image or whatever, because I was still posting fitness content. And so this girl replies to me and she's like, Lauren, yes, I'll review it. I'm a maths teacher. I was like, cool, you're exactly who I'm looking for. And little did I know that despite the fact that she was a maths teacher living in Australia, she was actually an American girl who had moved there because you get paid more money to be a maths teacher in Australia than America. And she was making like, I don't know, 20, 30 grand a year. That was it. But she had a YouTube channel talking about how to basically lose weight on a plant-based diet. So it was all a bit strange. And I didn't know that she had this YouTube channel with like, what, a thousand subscribers on nothing. And by the way, the way that she'd grown her subscribers was making videos about Australian versus American living. So it was not a niche following or anything, but I digress. She bought, sorry, she she gave me feedback on the ebook and it was really good. And she said, cool. So like, how do I work with you? And I was like, what do you mean work with me? Like you're super lean. Do you want to gain muscle? Or like, are you trying to like do a powerlifting competition? She's like, no, like to grow my business. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't do that. And so she basically had to convince me <laughs> to let her be my client. And I was like, how the heck is this going to work? I cannot remember how much I charged her. I'd have to look back and I could even ask her because I'm still friends with her now. But lo and behold, this girl, her Instagram is called Healthy Emmy. She now has more than 700,000 followers on Instagram, TikTok as well. She blew up. She has like a, a multi-million dollar business and she's still selling the same thing that I created with her back in the beginning. Okay, this was so cool. So back then though, she was she was like, super broke like that's why she was living in Australia because it was making her more money and so then what ended up happening was after a few months she launched this course and it was crazy Uh, then yeah she was able to move back blah 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 the rest is history so that was my first client and it was just so amazing to now watch her journey over the last what six or I don't know even how many years it's been now but to go from literally nothing to a very stable multi-million dollar business and be like a literally a number one influencer in her space. That was so cool. I mean, I don't know if I just got lucky with the client or like if my skills were really that good, but damn, that was that was amazing. Well, you have to have the right players on the team in order to get the results that you want to get. I mean, you can't have bad players on a good team and be successful. So you have to find the right people for the right role and get them in the right spot to be successful just because everyone can't be LeBron James. Not everyone can be the king and you have to have role players. And it seems like you stumbled across a, uh, as what Bob Ross would say, a happy little accident there, which was- tra- transformed into an, a huge business. Now, like, let's just say I'm starting out. Someone's out there listening they're working their W-2 job or they're starting out. All they have is their phone and they create a brand new Instagram page, nothing on it, just pure blank canvas. What what steps do they need to take in order to go from making nothing to finding that first client and then allowing that to snowball down the road? So right now, the key is if you were starting from scratch, like if you were starting from scratch, scratch, well, the key is to have a micro niche. So what's one small little topic that you could talk about all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. So for example, W2, I'm I'm British, right? So to me, I think that means like a contractor, right? Can you just confirm for me what that is? Like someone that works at an employment job where they get paid every two weeks or every Ah, okay. Month. So like a, it's like a, a normal job, right? Normal job, benefits, job. health plan, dental, the whole ah. shebang. 
What's that other one you guys have that, which is like a sales rep, you know, if they're just on like a, contract. a 1099 contractor. So 1099. someone who is contracted for a specific amount of time, but they don't have the same benefits as an employee. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So for example, like if you were an employee and the goal is to leave and make your own, uh, you know, business or something, right? I mean, I guess they follow you because what they want to get into like the financial business or what are they trying to do? They want to learn how to invest and any tips that I have to help assist them on that journey, such as this podcast is more about like business and learning about people's journey because it's hard when you're starting out. But if you see that other people have done it, you know, we're mm -hmm. all just people. If one person could do it, then you could do it. So it's almost like having a, you know, creating a belief system for someone who might feel like there is no, there is no hope. Totally. No, it makes total sense. So then when it comes down to starting the page, it would be about what's like a micro niche and make a brand new, brand new Instagram. That's really key. Making a new Instagram account, not your old one that you've had with your friends, like a new page that's going to be specific to this thing. And you're only going to talk about this thing. So there'll be three types of content, just three types of content that could I had one client who used this strategy and she grew to 30,000 followers on a new account in five weeks right so i'm just telling you like this is very doable this is right now she did this over the like the last five weeks leading up to today i was just talking to her about it today because i was asking her cool like you know um do you think that anyone could do this and she was like yeah i do now that i've done it so anyways um the first type of content is to reach more people so that's really specific niche based content so let's just say give me give me a random example of like what someone listening to this might might want to have as as their topic hey if you're working a job you don't like you need to listen to this oh okay okay so that's very uh that's very uh, meta but let's do it so yeah i mean it would just be a case of like okay so what are five steps to actually be able to successfully leave your job and then mm -hmm. tactically show how to do that so step number one, like, could you show your screen of like a website that they need to go to, right? Something like that. Um, step two, okay, what's the second step? Like, actually show it like a tutorial. That's really key. And this video should be like 30 to 60 seconds of pure, pure, pure value. And at the end, just ask them to follow you. And in the caption, say the same steps, just type it all out and just get them to follow you. Because the whole purpose of that content is to get them to actually follow, right? And the best way that I found to do it is through creating like a day okay here's day one here's day two like a story right so it's like okay over the next 30 days i'm gonna leave my job this is day one and you just get them to follow you along their journey your journey right that could be an example of it so how can you get people to actually follow right because obviously that's the goal is to get them to follow you the second type of content which i wouldn't i honestly wouldn't introduce this until probably about 60 days in because you you really just want to be focusing on that top of the funnel content in the beginning. But then that second type of content is designed to turn people who are following you into leads. Because here's the problem. If you just have an Instagram account, if your Instagram account were to get hacked or to, you know, go down or whatever ends up happening, then you've lost everything, right? So um, that content is designed to take people from social media to follow you. And the way that you do that is once you start working with clients, what are the problems and pain points that people are telling you that they have in their sales process? And then creating content all around those pain points, right? Um, and then getting people to comment a keyword in order to get access to a free thing. And so you can use automation to do all of that. It's, it's very simple nowadays. And then the third type of content is offers. So this is where you would put out offers to actually want to become your client. And in the beginning days, it would really just be a case of like, you know, before I start charging full price for whatever it is that you're going to do, I'm looking for three people to work closely with until you insert the outcome there. And then you can put that offer out once a week because then you can get people to actually raise their hand and become your client right there and then from social media. Yeah, totally. And I think you mentioned that the uh, the freebie for the audience is the uh, keyword, the DM, DM them for yeah, the social media DM funnel. Me. Yeah, they can DM me on Instagram saying the word leads and uh, they'll get the social media system for free. My and Instagram's at Lauren Tickner. Yeah, and that's T-I-C-K-N-E-R. That's right. Just in case. I'm sure people put the C and no K or K and no C. <laughs> it's one of those last names anyone could definitely butcher. So like, did you did you just like teach yourself this all on your own? Like from trials and tribulations in terms of like developing these systems? Or did like did you have some help in regards to building out this phenomenal brand? 
well my team right so like I try and hire people who are so so good at what they do but I mean you get the most learning from doing and so I'm not doing everything now obviously in the beginning I was but like for all that stuff for the ebooks like yeah I mean I google stuff I research stuff I, I did go to masterminds of course um, I think it's so important to get coaching and to hire people to support you with things but in the early days I was just trying to figure things out if I knew what I knew now I would hire the best in the business to help me, right? But obviously back then I didn't I didn't know that business coaching was a thing because obviously even when that client asked me for help, I didn't I didn't know why she was trying to ask me for help because I just didn't know that it was a thing. Um but nowadays I really look to who can I hire to in, implement a system or to do things better because there's only so much that you can do on your own. So it gets to a certain point where you just realize like the value of your time. And then also like you can go so much further when you're with good people on your team. So, I mean, there's endless people that I've learned from like studying courses, masterminds, coaches, books, so many. So I definitely didn't invent everything from scratch, but the key is like the way that I put things together is based upon my experience. And that's what scaling is. People are like, oh, I want to scale. But like, what is scaling? Scaling is taking time out of the equation so like, for example, Papa John's, Papa John doesn't work in every single store, but he created a system so that every little pizza that's sold, it goes back to Papa John, even if it's only a fraction or we'll call it a slice, a slice <laughs> of the pie. So he's getting a slice of every single pie, but he's not involved in every single system. And that could be hard when you work really hard to create a brand, you work really hard to leave your job, you work really hard to make a lot of money. Now you have to like give up control. And nowadays, with all of social media being so noisy, what are some things people need to look out for? Because not everyone out there could have the amount of value that they're perceiving to their audience. And you mentioned that a little bit earlier. So I was curious to hear maybe what should people look out for as uh, their spidey senses are tingling a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a case of doing what they say and does it work <laughs> right I mean that's the simplest way to see if actually what they're saying is true or not because if you just follow them then you don't know but if you take their advice and like try something with making sure that it's not something that has a lot of risk attached to it then obviously you can see if what they told you to do is actually generating results or not but I mean it depends what we're talking about here is it, do you mean like when it comes to hiring people as like a coach or following them because it's a different strategy depending on which. Let's say we're like, I've been following Lauren. I got Lauren on the Unconventional Money Moves podcast right now. I'm like, man, I like Lauren. I'm going to sign up with Lauren. Like what separates you from someone else that I see on social media that's doing, I don't want to say the same thing. It's perceived that they're doing the same thing on the front end, but on the back end, that could be the difference between success and failure just by not having the right systems and finding the right person that's going to help you with what you're looking to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, I think it's track record, really. I mean, if you actually go and speak to some of their clients, that's always the easiest thing because you can see people on like their sales pages and stuff or whatever. But if you actually go and talk to the people that they're saying that they've worked with, I think that really is the key thing. And you'd be more surprised, like people do reply. Um, and also like whenever I've mis made mistakes in the past through, yeah, investing in the wrong things, it's always been because I've just gone for it without doing like my due diligence and actually checking, is this person like who they say they are? So like, what's their track record? Like how many clients have they helped? Uh, what are the results like? Have they helped people where you're at right now and where you wanna go? And then if you speak to those clients, like what do they actually say? Was it just okay? Did they pay for that testimonial, right? Like it's crazy some of the stuff that happens, but you have to do your due diligence for sure and your background checks. Um, and to answer your question, like what, what do I think makes me different than anyone else who's like in the space? I mean, I just think it's track record ultimately. I mean, you there is no one else in the space who has got as many client results as we have. And that's just because we've been doing it for so, so long. And uh, we work with, with a lot of big names, right? Like Founder, I don't know if you know the company Founder, F-O-U-N-D-R. Uh, Nathan Chan, they have a massive business. You know, we're helping them directly with their DM sales system. Um, we work with big, big people. And yeah, so that's probably what I'd say. So if someone was out there, they're like, listen to this, like I like look what Lauren has to say. And I want to start taking my game to the next level. What steps would they have to take in order to work with someone like you? Or maybe what steps do they need to take to get up to the level so that they can work with you? Because it could be, you know, they need to do a little bit of legwork before they just jump into the deep end and hope they can swim without 
knowing they can swim. Yeah, like I think the best way is always just to go through someone's free stuff, right? Like what freebie are they offering? What are they offering? Like a workshop or a seminar or like an online training or something. Go through that, do it. And then you can just book a call with their team, right? Whether it's my team, whether it's someone else, speak to them. Because if you speak to them, then you might find out that they offer something that's actually a good fit for you that they aren't like marketing. For example, like we have some super high end stuff, which on the front end, we don't market. And then at the same time, we have some lower end stuff as well that we also don't market because we market to our most ideal client. But then, you know, if some people come into the funnel, they're talking to us, having conversations, um, then we can direct them in the right place or just give them some free stuff to help. And so I always think it's like quite telling to see how they treat you if they're not, if you're not an ideal client for them yet. Because I've had it before where, you know, seven or eight years ago I applied for a mastermind and they just text me on Instagram being like Lauren you're not a good fit I've uh, canceled our call and I even to this day I was still like salty about that I was like oh okay this is like a big name and I was ready to invest you know but they didn't know because my revenue apparently wasn't where it needed to be back then you know what I mean so yeah well the numbers and pieces of paper can only tell so much of the story and that's where a lot of people go wrong when it comes to investing uh, and that's what something like people don't even realize like Warren Buffett has bought companies for billions of dollars without ever visiting them just because he knows exactly what he's looking for. He has a target and then he knows exactly what questions to ask and how to analyze things so that he knows it's a good deal for him. It's a good deal for the other parties involved. And then uh, typically uh, everyone wins in that moment. But in the end, uh, Mr. Mr. Warren has definitely been opportunistic in terms of what he's been able to do. And one final interesting question I just thought of, you know, being on social media can be tough and it can be, you know, hard for a lot of people. A lot of people have burnout. Is there anything that you haven't shared with your audience on social media that maybe someone doesn't know about you? Oh, tons of stuff for sure. I don't share like, I don't share like 99% of my life on social media. What's something you could share if, if you're open to it? No pressure. I think that in the past I had definitely overshared stuff like I don't even like people knowing where in the world I am right like I because there are some weird people out there and that's something you do have to consider as you do grow like a bigger audience so um for example like I used to always post where like if I was at a restaurant I would post I would tag the location you know that's so dumb why the hell did I do that that was so stupid whereas now I never do that never so if you just have your friends following you then sure that's fine but like if you have strangers on the internet following you you just don't know (laughs) So um, I think I've been more careful recently to just remember why am I doing this, right? And like my goal is to empower people to build a business that they love, that gives them the freedom um, that they want. And so if it's not relating to that, I don't need to share it. It's nothing. People don't need to know everything about my life. Um, So yeah, tons of stuff. And I share what I share um, because it's important that people can get to know me, you know, but at the same time, like, unless you're with someone like constantly all throughout the day, there's so much that even your friends don't know about you. Right. And so um, I think people can make a mistake from oversharing. So I don't really have anything right now that comes to my mind, to be honest. Like, I think I'm sharing like good stuff that is valuable for people. And like, if I'm telling them, like, oh, I hurt my foot, you know, it doesn't really matter to them. (laughs) Yeah. Obviously, like, if you want to let people know you're in the hospital or something, but you don't have to share like every, every single part of your life with them. And I feel like that's a great tip for someone who does build a brand. Be careful of where you're telling people you are because you never know who might show up. But this is great, Lauren. Appreciate having you on the Unconventional Money Moves podcast. Go find Lauren on Instagram, Lauren Tickner, and we'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone.